But first, I want to bring up my guy Eric, man. Eric is, as I've known Eric for a long time, a strong advocate for the homeless population here in the district. And we all know that homeless people around this country face a very big brunt of police misconduct. So I want to give, give it up for Eric Sheptock, man. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. Like, like uh, Eugene said, my name is Eric Sheptock. I'm a homeless advocate here in Washington, D.C. I've been fighting for the homeless for about eight years now. But, but you know, I should actually say this is the first time that I heard an announcement about a protest on Channel 4 News or, or any news station for that matter. And for the look here, here, I love seeing all these folk here, but I should say that not enough people watch Channel 4 because we should have folk all over this place that should be standing room only out here. But, but, but let me tell you though, now as, as a homeless advocate, I can tell you that the homeless get pushed around a lot by the cops. You probably see it. Some of you might have been by the uh, IMF World Bank a few years ago when the cops bothered the homeless guy who wasn't doing anything because they didn't want all these dignitaries to see a homeless guy in Washington, D.C. They told them to move. I love what the people did. About 200 people began to shout down the cops and tell them to back the F up, you know, and I saw like two dozen cops standing side by side, take two steps back like we're not going to mess with you. I love you for that. Anybody who was there, I want to thank you again. But that said, you know, I, I often tell people how in Iraq, when we thought that the uh, American soldiers were depriving the, the uh, Iraqi captives of sleep, we called it torture. But here in this country, a homeless person can, can lack a shelter, sleep on a park bench, get told by the cops, move on, they go somewhere else, a half hour later, they're told, move on, they can't get any sleep, but it's not considered torture, right. you know, but I also want to say this too, though, we got to say that every gathering that the problem is capitalism, can I hear you say, the problem is capitalism, you know, and, and capitalism is a dog-eat-dog -dog system, and, but let me tell you, though, first we had slavery for blacks, and then we had Jim Crow law, and now we're at racial profiling, and that one hasn't ended. And, but the, here's what else you got to remember, too, though, is that some years ago in the 1960s, the Black Panthers wanted to teach black children about the system and how the system is hurting them. And they began to give the kids school breakfast and school lunch. And then the feds came in, and they said, you know what? We don't want those kids to learn the truth, so we're going to give them breakfast and lunch, but without that education about their society. They want to treat you like mushrooms, keep you in the dark and feed you a bunch of mess, if you know what I mean, okay? But we can't let that happen. we got to get educated, and we got to come up with a very good way of confronting them. I, I'm glad we're doing what we're doing today because we're going to send the message that it's not going to be business as usual. You're not going to be able to go to your jobs and your homes or wherever you go as long as we have so many people that are being so terribly mistreated by the system. We're going to shut you down and we're going to make you recognize our issue and we're going to make you stand with us. If you won't stand with us, then you're not going to go anywhere because we're shutting it down and it will not be business as usual. You know, folk are saying that the folk in Ferguson, you know, are a bunch of rabid animals, but we know better, you know, because 46 years ago in 1968, MLK Jr. got assassinated, and there were riots after that, but then the government kind of sort of said, you know what, if you all calm down, we'll take care of your issues. I wasn't born yet. I'm 45 now. It's been 46 years, and things still had not been taken care of, so we've learned this. We learned this much, that when you calm down, your issue does not get addressed. That's why you got to stay by it. You got to stay in there, baby. And you will not go anywhere until your issue is adequately addressed. And I'll end by saying this, though, that when we go up against the cops, we need to also remember that the cops are employed by a government, and the government has a chief executive. And therefore, we need to go to City Hall, for the local police. We need, we need to go to federal government for the federal police and so forth and so on. We can't just talk to the police because they, they're a bunch of brainless fools who are not told to think, you know, and so we need to go to their higher ups and we need
need to demand better and we need to demand a full systemic change. We need to demand that civil rights be re revisited by the feds on down, you know, and, and we, we need to make sure that this time around that we do not stop until we get full reparations. All right, sister, bro, we're going to get ready to move out, but first we want to give a couple of instructions on how we're going to proceed. First thing is, 